Blackburn on a drizzly Saturday night is not a hugely inviting prospect, but it's the regular haunt of a particularly devoted breed of music fan. It's sad to see it like this, to be honest. We've got an art deco masterpiece right in the middle of Blackburn, yeah? And we have, you can't deny it. Look at the lighting, the covers on the lighting, the, the, you know, the trouble they went to. So the whole place just reeks of it, Blackburn's history, doesn't it? You know, the thousands of people who've come through here, dance lessons, drama lessons. It's a great pity to me now that People don't see it as what it was meant for. Two or three hundred people dancing, having a good time, whether it's a party. I mean, it had, we were short of a lot of things, but atmosphere was never one of them. I mean, it was a terrific atmosphere when everybody was having a good time. And that was my happiest memory. It just shouldn't be left to... No, it's... No, it's sad. It's just such a waste. I mean, when I walked out of here for many weeks after, I, well, no, for many years after, I couldn't, I couldn't walk down the street. It, it, it just would have upset me too much. Yeah. All their memories come flooding back. You know, it's uh, yeah, it's really special as well. I'm getting upset now. My mum has died, and my dad's died now. So this was the last place that it really I was with them. I was a mod and so all the mods used to come and park up the scooters outside and then walk up the steps into the into this brilliant building. But as I walked up the steps then, it's like nostalgia flooding back. It just made me feel 17, 18 again. And I remember because I'm prompted by an old documentary that was done in that, around 1986, 87 and um, there was Guy Hennigan at the bottom of the stairs. There was me and my friend Sharon walking up with our suit bags because all mods used to take a change of clothes to an all-nighter because we weren't scruffy like some of the soul is. We were like proper smart. And we walked up with our suit bags and just entered this room. And the music was booming. It was absolutely packed. But I feel, it's that here now, I just feel like I'm a teenager again. People travel from all over the country. All over the country come here, either to DJ or to hear the quality tunes that were played. 
you know, you, you knew how good it was going to be. I don't recall having a bad night here, ever. I don't recall a bad night. He got absolutely seal of approval from day one. Because the, these are the venues that you want to be listening to Northern Soul music in. Yeah? It's just a beautiful place. It's. I was talking to someone at work the other day about it, uh, and we were saying they didn't even serve beer, it was all soft drinks and cups of tea, and the original machine, the brew machine's still there. It's just a, a place this good in Blackburn to not be used in this original Art Deco style. It's a jewel that's like enclosed in a box and no one can see it. It was always really good because it was packed and I used to love it. Do you know, I could still go into routines that we did. They would insist on putting talcum powder on the floor, which was fine for them. But when you've a tea dance for the over 70s, two days later, it would take one step on this. And boom, they would go. So the floor, after every all night dance, had to be more or less stripped back and repolished, which took quite some doing. I can still touch my toes, even though I've had a hip See? replacement. <laughs> well, I knew Tony himself, very likeable man. Um, and he told me about the history of the building. Uh, it was originally a congregational chapel. If you look at the shape of the windows, they are quite ecclesiastical in shape. And he took the lease on the building in 1926. He took the lease from, it was an auctioneers and valuers in Town Hall Street, Jolly Wheel. And Johnny's ghost is supposed to haunt this place. There used to be a couple who came for dancing classes and they were always late. The class started at eight o'clock and they were always late. I got, over the weeks I got talking to them and I said, you, we'll get here on time one day. And they said, well, we'll go to church before we come here. And I thought, church on a Monday, Monday night. Anyway, we got talking and it turned out he was training to be a medium. And we were studying this area here and he said, every time I go upstairs, he said, I always have a conversation with a man. Dark suit, plump, brown-faced. And I said, well, Tony himself was a little plump man. No, he says, it wasn't Tony. He said, he, he keeps telling me he built this place. Anyway, eventually I showed him a photograph and the photographer was on these steps looking down into the ballroom. And he looked at this photograph and this man had no connection with Blackman. I think he was originally from Luton. And he just pointed and he said, that's the man I speak to. And it was Johnny Wheel, who I never knew and wouldn't have recognised who was the one, the auctioneer and valuer who owned the building. And he said, uh, he keeps talking about paddies. I said, it doesn't mean anything to me. So I had a word with Tony's daughter, Josie. I said, I told her the story. I said, he keeps talking about paddies. She said, yeah, that's right. She said, I was eight when the ballroom reopened after it had been expanded. And my dad wanted to call it Paddy's. But Johnny Wheel said, no, if you're going to give it a name, you give it your own name. And she said, there's nobody else in Blackburn would have known that. So after that, I had to remain convinced. My mum used to come here in the 50s <laughs> with my dad when he was a teddy boy. and. Uh, and dance the night away, which is, uh... so we, when I came in here, it were like, I don't know, it were like a, 
something you've been looking for. People in the room from all over the country, all here for the music. The best way to describe it to you, when you, when you sit at home and you listen to your, your singles, or you play in a pub, you know, but a lot of people in the pub aren't there to listen to your music, yeah? There's a lot of talking and messing about and whatever. But for me, it's like, I, I'm sure you've got records at home that you will put on and you get the, the buzz, you know, you get the goosebumps. Doesn't matter how many times you've played it, it hits you straight away, yeah? So imagine coming into a venue at midnight and every record that they play, you get that buzz. That's our best way to describe it for me. I'm getting it now. I can feel it now. I mean, music's the greatest thing in the world to bond people. If you meet someone at a gig anywhere, you know, it can be a small gig, a big gig, a festival, yeah, you shake hands, you exchange details, you have a laugh together, and it stays with you forever. The music stays with you forever, and I think that's a wonderful thing. My parents met here. They used to come here and they used to speak about it very fondly about how they, uh, they used to dance to the, the Regal Three. I knew that Tony's had been a venue for live music, um, and we were approached by Janet to perform here. I promoted an evening here. Um, two bands, um, Stockholm Monsters and Some Now Are. It was a brilliant night, it was a sellout, the atmosphere was fantastic. So to see something come back, if we could get Tony's back, would be a great venue because it's a good size, a good intimate size to be able to see and hear music again. You don't really get many places like this anymore. You know, it, it's, it's just one of those places where at the time, everybody wanted to come here, you know, I had to on a waiting list to get it booked for the, the reception. I was so lucky, as you can tell by my youthful looks, I was too young to go to Wigan Casino and all that. And I'm lucky that I came here because the, the quality of the music that was played by the guys up there, it was, it was just cutting edge stuff for the day, it was fantastic. So I consider myself lucky that I, uh, I had my education on the soul scene here. There's a picture that we've got when we put our acid house dues on in here, uh, and it's telegraph socket looking down that way to town hall, and it's black and white, and you can see the steam coming out, where it looks like the smoke coming out, that much steam from people jumping and you know, dancing around. Just walking in here then, stepped onto the sprung dance floor and that just makes me want to dance. I mean, after an event, this, ball, this floor would creak away. You'd be convinced somebody was walking as the springs come back up. You have rose-tinted memories of places, but I remember it being lit up and bouncing and music pumping out and people enjoying life. It should, it should be used to knock this down, which eventually would be knocked down. It's really criminal. We've got the memories of being here, but our kids haven't. And uh, it, at the moment, they haven't got the chance to do that. And it, it would be really, really good if they did get that chance, because it's just sitting here going to waste, and it's a real shame. Why should we get rid and have yet another faceless venue down the road that's ugly and horrible? And, and this is just a beautiful building and beautiful dance floor. And I think everyone would flood back in the droves and just love it and take care of it. And it's such a shame that it's fallen into sort of disrepair. And if you lose this, there's nothing else like this and it would never be rebuilt like this. It'll be rebuilt in a modern vision. It's like it's a jewel in the crown of black, but it's, it's like, look at it. I think there's nothing better than, than, than to bring people together, the community together, than great events, great music, where everyone can have a great time. And it lives with you, as you say, forever. If you've had a great time, you met great people, you, you form life, lifelong friendships with people. I, I get money is tight and money has to go to different places and there has to be a priority list. But something like this, this could be like the place to go and for so many people, not just for people who are into my kind of music and my kind of scene, but you know, like you could have it 
once a month there or once every six months or whatever for Northern Soul and then other nights for other people. It would mean so much to everyone. Tonight with you For the first time I have learned what my lips are for And darling now That I've kissed you I am craving to kiss you more Let me tell you One after tonight is all over Long after tonight is all gone I'll be yours Forever and a day I'm gone Come in and think that me You'll always be Just everything To me Yeah Alone 